Hello everybody and welcome back to Creativity Time. My name is Tatiana and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in Australia. I primarily make cards and I like to do live videos to inspire people to make a card and most importantly to send the card to somebody. When you do come in, please say hi. I enjoy a bit of a chit chat, I guess you could call it, or a tete a tete. Not quite a tete a tete. But you know you're watching live if you see the live, red live word there. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for joining me. And please subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates to my next videos. Hello, Kayla. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday on my blog and social media, I showed a very, even if I say so myself, but I'm quoting words of someone else, stinking cute card. It was an inside spinner card inspired by Jennifer Maguire. And I was requested to show how to make it. So I have prepped. This is something I've never done before. Or not so much never, but I don't really do this. But I have prepped everything and we're going to recreate the exact same card. So let's get to the craft desk and get creating. Okay, so this is the stamp set I used. It's called Little Ladybug and it is a hostess stamp set during celebration. So every January, February, March, Stamping Up has a celebration, <laughs> a celebration which they call celebration where you can earn free products with a purchase. And this particular stamp set is a hostess set. That means that if you spend over $250 or you gather a group of friends and to collectively spend over $250, you will get the stamp set for free. Good morning, Megan. Thank you for joining me. You're Kayla, you're working. Oh, you're working on Christmas Day. No. Anyhow, so this was the stamp set that I used for the card that I showed yesterday. And this is the card. Watch this. This is the fun bit. So the card is, I've kept it fairly simple on the front. I had a bit of a discussion with some teammates um, whether I should add ribbon or this and that. But we end up with keeping it simple because when you open the card, there's this adorable little flying ladybird or lady beetle. How cool is that? So I was watching Jennifer Maguire videos and was inspired. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. Uh, the two techniques you need to know is the fold on the inside and how to reverse stamp or mirror image stamp. That is the main things here. So let's go through what we need. Put those to the side. You need your card base. I'm using Pool Party. Thank you, Monica. Love spinner cards, Megan. I have to say that this is my first spinner card. That Well, that one over there. This is Pool Party. It is just half an A4 sheet and then scored down the middle. So nothing fancy there. Morning, Karen. So that is the card front. Card base, should I say. For the card front, I have a piece of, this is Mossy Meadow, and it is 9.5 by 13.8 centimetres. I do have all these dimensions up on my blog already, so don't feel pressured there. And then I've got a piece of this beautiful poppy DSP. This is the new DSP that's coming out as of 3rd of January. And if you can't wait till then, you can get it now if you join my team. And put it into your starter kit, which is only $169 and you get to pick $235 worth of products. It is really the best deal in town. And this is the other side. Isn't that pretty? But that is just too busy for our card. And I really like these stripes. It's, it's really hard to pick what side of the DSP to use. Um, this one's cut four millimeters smaller than the one, <coughs> the Mossy Meadow at 9.1 by 13.4. Plus, I've got 
9 millimeter strips at a height of 14.3 for the inside. If I bring the card back in, you'll see I have those in there. Again, uh, measurements are on my blog. And what I'm going to do is take my glue and, and here the DSP down to the mossy meadow. Just a thin strip. <coughs> and those green stripes are your favorite. Yep, they are beautiful. And then this will go on the front of the card. And so, so once again, just using the, this is the multi-purpose liquid glue. And the reason why I prefer this glue to most of our other options for this kind of work is that it allows some wiggle room. So when I put it down, you can see I can wiggle it around before it fully sets to kind of make sure I've centered it properly. So that is all done. For the inside of the card, I have a piece of Whisper White. This is the regular Whisper White, not the thick. And it is cut to the full length or width of the card, which is half an A4. It's the width of a A4 sheet, which is 21 centimeters. And I cut it just slightly, you can see, smaller in height which was at 14.3 centimeters so that when I close the when we finish the card it will sit with a border around the edge and I haven't scored this or anything yet so we're going to do that and I was going to try to be a very clever good morning Kathy thank you for joining me I'm going to be trying to be very clever and I'm going to try to well you need to cut the window. This window needs to go in the middle of the card. And for this the one, I did the scoring first and then die cut and then had to die cut another piece. But I want to try to be clever and die cut the front piece out of the inside before I score. And for that, I'm going to try to find the middle. Not try to find the middle. I'm going to find the middle line, which is ten and a half. And I'm just going to mark that, just start the score. Let's see. If it flared and go too far up. Now this might be hard to see for you. I can actually add a bit more of a score line. Bit more at the top there. Ten and a half. And I'm going to center that score line along the edges, that flat edge. This die piece, I should say, comes from the Wild Rose. I might move that down a bit actually. There we go. It's a bit better. To uh, it's come there's a wild rose in the annual catalog, and this is the die set to that stamp set. And it's just this beautiful label. And I think it works really well for this card. Excuse me. <coughs> oh summer colds, Jojo. Now I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. There we go. So now I've got the front piece. Oh no! No! Look at that. I ripped. You're going to have to start again. That's frustrating. Bummer. <coughs> what a bummer. Okay. This is a strip of... I don't know why there's finger marks on this. Oh, 
to say 43. Cutting a new piece. Because that's what I have to do. See? We all make mistakes. And I'm just going to score this one this time. I'm going to do all the scoring while I have the trimmer out. Okay, so I've scored it down the middle. I'm not sure why there's... We'll use this side. Scored it down the middle, and then I need to score it six centimeters from each edge. Make sure you use the scoring blade, which is the lighter colored one, not the dark one. Six centimeters. Keeping it real, that's right, Vicky. But man, that was poor. To be honest, I've never had that happen to me before. Well, I've already got my cut out here, so I'm not needing the whole accuracy thing and that, but I'm going to line that up, try to make sure the middle of that section is right in the middle there on the score line. I'm using a bit of washi tape and I'll be back and this time I will make sure I'll position this right on my This one, woot, woot, woot. Put the die away. Nice. And this. And I'm going to leave this flat. I'm not going to do any of the folding yet. We're just doing the prep work. Put this to the side. And now, of course, we need all our stamped images. I have already pre colored and fussy cut the little beetle from the front and then I've got the first side of our two-sided so we need to stamp another one of these but in mirror image can you see that that's mirror image and I'm going to show you how to do that and I've already colored most of the flower because I'll show you the last petal how I do that gradient look there and then I've just used a little bit of a different lady beetle that will sit on the flower inside the card <coughs> And to do the mirror image stamping, you will need the Stamparatus. And I'm just going to go grab I forgot to bring it over. I have the silicon craft sheet here. I just washed it this morning. It needs to be nice and clean. And I'll grab the Damp. Hello, Sherry. It's so cute. Thank you, Kathy. All we need to do is, it doesn't matter where we position this, the main thing is that we're stamping onto the silicon mat first. I'm using a memento ink because I'm colouring with the, what are we colouring with, the stamping blends. I'm going to ink up my stamp. And stamp onto the silicon now because there's not going to be as much ink on that as there would have been transferred onto that as there would have been on paper I'm going to repeat this a few times and this is why using the stamparatus is really 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 I'm gonna even say important because that way you're going to know that you've definitely lined it up Correctly. I'm just going to do one more layer and flip. And while it's still wet, got to kind of work quickly. Is I've got a piece of Whisper White Thick is what I've coloured all the others on, and I'm placing that paper on top, and then pressing. By keeping the stamp here, I'm putting the pressure exactly where the stamp is to get that reversed Im mirror image stamping. 
Now, of course, I'm going to get one on that side, but you can see the ink has transferred from the silicon sheet onto my Whisper White, and I have the reverse. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to put that to the side now, and we are going to colour our lady beetle in quickly. For this beautiful flying beetle, I am using Poppy Parade, dark and red. And I was going to colour the shading in the exact same spot, but I've gone, couldn't think opposite. So I'm just using the dark Poppy Parade first. And then I'm blending it in with the light going around the spots. It doesn't matter if you go out of the edges because we will be fussy cutting this right on the black line. But make sure you're neat on the inside there. I did get a bit of red where I didn't want it, so I'm going to use the color lifter here. So you can see, I did a little bit of a boo boo, but the color lifter allows me to remove that quite well. So do take your time coloring, enjoy the coloring process. I had stamped most of these soon after I got the stamp set, I think. And then I took it away with me when I traveled and colored these while traveling. I wasn't sure of the project yet. But I think I found a pretty cute project. There we go. Now I'm using the basic black light. I just want those spots to be a solid kind of feel but I don't mind if kind of still shows that there is variation in color. The reverse image isn't as 100% sharp as the original but it's fairly close and because this will be spinning you won't really notice to be honest. Perfect and for the body I'm using the ivory. So this one does not come in light and dark. It's simply ivory. And I found it a little too dark for my liking for some reason. So I colored it in. I should have used the brush tip. Okay, not worried about the neatness because we're cutting. And then I went off over it with color lifter. Now I know you can't see much difference right now but as time goes on it does develop a difference. And then I'm adding some shading. So you can still add shading with the same color. It's not as obvious shading as using a dark light combo but it does make a difference and you should be able to see that on the little finished one there and while we have the markers all out I'm gonna show you how I did the petal the only difference I've done in the flower from the original card is that I've colored the inside with a uh, pumpkin pie instead of mango melody because I wanted it to be a bit more orange and for the petals I wanted the middle or the center of the petal bit that's in near the center to be darker and then the red kind of fade into white. And to do that, you take your color lifter and work in sections and add it to the petal. You're kind of saturating the base first. And then you go in and add, so I add the dark. So saffron is what I'm using. I'm going further than I intend it to be on the finished product. And now I'm adding the light so saffron and I'm blending it in with the dark and then I take back to the color lifter and blend back that edge. This technique works primarily with the softer colors. It doesn't work so well with the dark colors. And I did forget with a floaty flamingo to add our little lady beetle some pink cheeks. 
Now I have saved you all the, I'm going to say pain of watching me fussy cut. And we only need to fussy cut this one out. Honestly, I don't mind it. It just takes time and it isn't as hard. Oh, before I fussy cut that, I wanted to do something. I'm going to take the Stamping Right Black Marker and I'm just going to go all around the edges there. And the reason I'm doing this, you'll see a bit later, but basically when you align these two up together, if there's any discrepancies in where I've cut, that will be covered up. And the other thing I wanted to do before I fussy cut was I'm going to add tear and tape to the back of this one make sure it's all and not take the backing off quite yet but this is what's going to hold the two sides of our lady beetle together and by adding it now I'm not going to be fussing with edges it's going to go right to the edge which is really quite lovely there now, return to fussy cutting. You could put it, the glue and colour it in a bit after you fussy cut. That's really not a problem. But I found by doing it before you fussy cut just gives it a bit more accuracy. Remember when fussy cutting, cut slowly and try to use the depth of your scissors. Really get it, open them wide and get it in there and move your paper. Don't move your scissors unless you're opening them up. <coughs> there we go, we're just going around. And I always try to start in a spot where I get most of the fiddly stuff done first. That way, back it off now. The rest of it is smooth sailing once you get past that bit of point. Now, can you believe it? I got in trouble for the way I cut when I was in kindergarten. I still remember that as clear as day. Getting in trouble by my kindergarten teacher for not cutting my stars out well. It scarred me. It really has scarred me because I've always liked craft and I was upset that I felt like I was failing art in kindy. Can you believe it? And I do remember the day that my artwork got chosen to be displayed out the front of the classroom. That was a proud moment. Okay, fussy cut all, fussy cutting all done. And one other detail that I haven't done to any, and ah, before I continue, you may have noticed that I've cut off their little antenna. Thank you, Kayla, for all those love hearts. Just makes it easier. I don't want to fussy cut those antenna. I'm going to take my stamp and write marker again, use the brush tip. And what I'm going to do is just go around the edges there. This removes and colors in, firstly, the edge of the black. Yes, you do love your fussy cutting. I fussy cut these while watching TV last night and thought of you, Kayla. You inspired me there <laughs> and it removes any white visible white that you may have missed when you're cutting so for example right there on that dot can you see a little bit of white and then when I go over this it's all gone it just gives you a nice solid black outline there we go had intended to do this last night, but forgot. All good. It's quite an easy job, as long as you don't lean the marker into your colouring. Should be all good. And the brush tip is best for this. I'm going to do that to all the pieces. Particularly for this spinning, flying lady beetle. 
Isn't she cute? We should give her a name. What should we call her? Acrobat? I don't know. That's not, no, that's not a very good name. Any suggestions? What should we call our spinning lady beetle? I kind of rest my pinky on the hand that I'm holding the piece and then just move it around. And then for this one, we also want to color those edges. Probably best if I take some paper on down to the table, but you know, it requires finding some scrap paper and this and that. There we go. Oh, the flower. Oh, I did get that dirty. Lucy, Lily, ooh. Lucky BPP. Not sure about that one, but Lucy. Spinning Lucy. Lucy the lady beetle. Is there a word for spinning that starts with an L? <laughs> I feel like either of those names, I love them both, Lily and Lucy, but there was girls in my daughter's class. <coughs> there was one Lucy and there was a Lily. I don't want to be naming it after my daughter's friends. <laughs> that was your bad typing. What was it supposed to be? Lucky. Lucky. Lady Beetle Lucky. Well, that could work. So again, like the fussy cutting, I kind of start in the area that's most fiddly and then continue. Hello, Angie. <coughs> Radio, the fun bit. Now we're going to take our lady beetle and take the backing off. And for this, I use the take your pick tool. And see what I mean by doing it before you fussy cut means that you don't have to deal with edges and it's all perfectly to the edge. Hello! I'm going to make a sandwich. Now for the key thing for this card as well is that you need some thread for your lady beetle to spin on. And this is the thread I'm using. It's clear thread. I've bought it from Spotlight. Um, if you have a Spotlight card, it comes down to $4.90 at the moment. So quick, quick, run, run. And it's clear thread and you'll find it in the quilting section. So not where all the threads are, in the quilting section. And I've already cut one. I cut it longer than it needs to be so that I've got space to play. And then I'm gonna lay that down onto the sticky side Whoop. she's sticking to me what do we call her I can't remember Lucy lucky and now carefully line that up and stick that side down and if there was any white bits that were mismatched from the little bit of difference in fussy cutting they're all covered up with that black ink that we put on the inside there we go Pumped. I got a bit of ink on that excuse me for a second just need some water now we have our pre we've scored our inside card insert and we're now going to fold those score lines so first one we're going to fold in half. There's the, there we go. Burnish it with our bone folder. And now we're going to fold this way. And burnish that and that. And it kind of 
forms the shape of a M, if you look at it this way, or a W, if you look at it this way. Point is, it it's like a mountain and valley fold. <coughs> and we're going to stick our lady beetle. So I'm taking it and flipping it to the back and placing the lady beetle into the hole. Placing Lucky, should I say. And I'm just using a bit of sticky tape here. Placing her, placing Lucky in the middle and I'm finding, I'm pulling the thread so that it's sitting right on that score line. I'm just using some sticky tape to stick that down. I just want to make sure it's really stuck down so I'm putting a second piece down here. Now I'm pulling this one tight. the top one. doesn't matter that the sticky tape has gone over the edge there because I can cut that off. Using my paper snips, trim that and trim this one. Bing bang boom. And there she is, hiding. I'll just give her a twist. And then when you open, ta-da! Let's adhere this into our card. Now to do this, <coughs> it's best to use tear and tape along these edges. So you'll need four pieces of tear and tape. One, Two, three, <coughs> four. Make sure I've got that the right way. And I'm only going to peel off this first. So the left hand side, I'm going to peel that back, the release paper. the backing paper and I'm going to line this up so that it has a small border around the edge there place it down and now remove the backing of the second half come on there we go. Keep that pressed down and bring that in. The only thing with our design here that doesn't work is that you've got to make sure your little ladybird beetle, little Lucy Lucky, is sitting this way when you close the card. That way she doesn't stick out. But otherwise, we're all good. Now, for a little bit of stamping, we've got the, I thought this was a perfect combination. Hey lady, on the front. Let's do that first. In the Memento ink. Hey lady. And then what I did was we've got this little lady beetle and she'll be hanging off the edge there, but we've lost her antennae because of the fussy cutting. And I'm gonna add them back in by stamping. And I don't need to stamp, ink up the whole stamp. I'm just inking up the top half, kind of positioning her where I want it. And then that will be able to be Stuck down. And there we go. She has her antenna back. How cute is that? And the same thing on the inside of the card. Just 
clean those up while I've got them there. Put this one back. And the hey lady. Which one did I have for the inside? Where am I? There we go, I have this one. Yes. Close the ink. Close the ink. Now for the inside, I will put the flower there and I will put a little bit of a score. So let's do that first. Grab my trail. score the end of that flower about so just so that it sits into that score line quite nicely Oop. give it a bit of a fold we know that that's going to go as so and this one is sitting on top of the flower Again, you don't need to ink up the entire image. Though I still want to remove the flower, just in case. And while we have, no, I want to close the ink pad not to get ink on this pretty card. Good morning, Margaret. Thank you so much for sharing. And going to grab the sentiment I thought this sentiment was just so perfect for this card on the front we've got the hey lady and then on the inside spread your wings and fly how awesome is that and how perfect is that with the little with little Lucy flying inside there stamped it in there we go And now we can just glue these bits in. If I was clever enough, I should have put some tear and tape on the back of these before I fussy cut them. But I wasn't so forward thinking last night. Just added some glue to that. main thing is to line up that score line perfect now we're going to add glue to our other lady beetle this one can be Lucy this one's Lucy that one's lucky and on the outside can be Lily there we go pushing that a little bit better Lucy has her antennae back and got to put Lily on. You don't need to put glue all over Lily because some of her does <coughs> come off the label there. I've just primarily put the glue on her head. Perfect. And this one needs some dimensionals. Now for those who have joined in the process, the stamp set will be available from the 3rd of January and it will be free if you purchase $250 or more. We call them Lisa as my youngest daughter loves them and with Ha ha ha, awesome. Lisa, that's another good name. I had Kayla come up with the names for me today. <laughs> and you can get this stamp set for absolutely free. And if you don't want to spend $250 on your own, you can get a group of friends <coughs> collectively and then you can share the stamp set. And that's from January 3rd till the 31st of March feel free to let me know. Now, no card is complete until we have, what? Until we have decorated the inside as well as the outside. Oh, as well as the envelope. 
Then uh, that the other stamp. So I'm going to grab an envelope. And I'm going to stamp the flower on the back. Mount it. And I'm just, because it's the bigger stamp, I've taken the ink pad to the stamp instead of the other way around. And stamp. Perfect. And that is the inside spinner card Lady Beetle tutorial. <coughs> and before you place it in the envelope, you give little Lucky some spins, then making sure she ends up facing this way. Close the card, put it into the envelope as so and then mail it off for someone to brighten their day and when they open it they will go oh oh <laughs> do you like my sound effects <laughs> that is there and there's still a bit of space to write your little message of encouragement impressness i don't know whatever you'd like to write that is that, my friends. Oh, no, stop. I have these two strips of paper. And they are going on the inside. They have gone too close there. Just a bit of glue. It is cute, isn't it, Monica? So cute. Just to kind of tie the front of the card to the concept, to the inside, I've got the same... Ooh, same piece of DSP as I did on the front. Cut two strips and we will adhere that to the inside. So you've noticed I've kind of slipped this underneath and phew, our sentiment is still showing. I got a bit of glue on there. And all you need is a white eraser, a clean white eraser, and a bit of elbow grease. And that will get rid of that glue. It's really no big deal. There, now that's finished. That's truly finished. It's my pleasure, Vicky. Happy to share how I made it. Because it's so stinking cute. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go, just to let you know, I'm happy to send a catalog to anyone who requires one or would like to know more. Feel free to message me. Oh, Amanda, you're just joining at the tail end. You can shop online at bit.ly forward slash shop with Tatiana. And you can do that 24 7 though some of these products aren't available till the 3rd of january and if you use the december host code thank you vicky hopefully i will get over this cold quickly which is 2 f 4 e t 9 w u you'll get a free gift from me in january and if you want the products now, want products now, join my team. We have some fun and it's no pressure to sell, absolutely not. You can just enjoy the discount or if you prefer just to purchase from me, I do have a customer loyalty program for every $50 you per spend, you get a sticker, collect 10 stickers and get a $50 worth of products for free for me. Thank you very much for joining me, spending some time with me. I hope I've inspired you and I will catch you next time. Bye for now.